so I'm back. All right, so this part is a little bit more involved, so I've added a few things, um, and then you'll see it as we go. All right, so let's get started. Um, so this is, again, the pattern that we're going to be using, and I'm going to be opening it, and so now we're going to be looking at the inside of the envelope. All right, so when you open it, you're going to see two separate things. You're going to see um, this paper, well, they're both paper, but this one is more so the instructions on how to put it together, just a little bit of back info, and then this part is the actual pattern pieces where you're going to cut and you're going to make your garment. All right, so we're going to be focusing on this, um, and it usually has multiple parts. Um, note that there is um, the other languages here as well um, for translation so if you do speak another language it is there and that hopefully is helpful so when I open it out it looks like this and there's just a lot here and honestly for someone who is sewing for the first time this is very overwhelming let me tell you but we're gonna break it down for you okay um, so here we go so Again, we have our different views. Um, and then the next thing that you should look at is the different pattern pieces that you're going to be cutting out. Now, the pieces, you want to make sure you know which pieces you're cutting out. So here's how you figure it out. So it's going to tell you A, B, and C. Um, if there is no letter next to that um, pattern piece, as in if you see the name of the pattern piece and then a number that follows it, it is specifically for that view only. All right. And so number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine are for all views. All right. So now when we get to 10, 11, well, 10 and 11, you'll notice letter A and letter C at the very end. That means that is specifically for view A and view C. And then when you get to um, pattern piece 12 and 13, um, you're gonna see specifically that this is for view B and view C. So the next part um, is the pattern markings. All right, so the pattern markings um, are right here. So this is where we have our grain line, our fold line, our buttonhole markings, our button marking, our notches and symbols, and you'll see um, seam allowance as well. Let's look at grain line a little bit more closer. All right, so grain line means a place on straight place on straight grain of fabric parallel to the selvage or fold. So when you go to the store and you get your bolt of fabric, so this is my little bolt, all right? Um, when they go to cut it they're gonna open it out like this and then you're gonna say how many yards you need and then they're gonna cut it so you're gonna notice um, that it's on a fold all right that natural fold that they gave it to you in is where the fold that they're talking about for grain line all right and then the selvage end is the opposite end of that you want to make sure that that line all right that arrow that front and back arrow I guess I don't know what's the front forward backwards arrow <laughs> is placed straight on the grain line okay you don't want to cut it like this all right now here's the thing i'm, I'm not even gonna lie to you <laughs> i have broken so many rules with sewing where i have definitely cut against the grain when i was supposed to cut straight on the grain if you are running out of fabric you can cheat in this area okay don't tell anyone I told you that. You can <laughs> cheat a little bit in there and go against the grain. Um, I don't, I'm not gonna, don't say Duana told you that, but that's what I have done if I'm running out of fabric and I absolutely need that extra piece. Fold line. So if you have a pattern piece that has a fold on it, um, you want to make sure that where the fold is, so you'll notice the fold, it looks kind of like, like, well, the air, it's like has the arrow, the double arrows again, but it's like pointed downwards. So where the arrow is pointing, that's where the fold is going to be pointing. Um, and so, or, or where the fold is gonna be. So this is where the fold is of the fabric. So you wanna lay it right there on the fold. Okay, and so you can pin it down and then cut it out there. So then you'd have, when you open it out, it's identical on both sides. So that's what that part is. All right, um, so now there's buttonhole markings. This one's pretty straightforward. This is what it looks like. It tells you the direction in which the buttonhole must be. So you might see it, um, you might see it like this, or you might see it in the other way, but you're gonna see that, and that's gonna be your buttonhole marking. Um, the X actually means where you place the actual button. Notches and symbols. Anywhere you see any of these markings, duplicate it some, in, on your fabric. For the ones that look like triangles, you, I, what I would do 
and I'll give an example. Let me take my little fabric here and I'm gonna show you what I mean. Um, what I would do, if you ever see um, this on your pattern piece, all right, and it looks like this, I take a pair of scissors and I would just make a snippet up until that, that line. All right, and what notches help you do is identify if you are sewing in, you are, it basically if your fabric matches properly. So if you have um, two notches on a pattern piece and you made your notches where they should be and you match it up, it should match up perfectly where those those not those double notches are. Some sides have one notch, some have two, um, and you just want to make sure it matches up properly. Um, so that's why I absolutely love uh, cutting my notches out because if they don't like they if they don't match up, at least you know you're a little off, and then you can try it again. You'll notice like this uh, cross with a circle around it. Um, this just tells you where the bust line is, the waistline is. This is not necessarily super important. I've never really needed to use that part so much. I just have trusted the pattern and it has worked out for me, but it could vary per person. And the last but not least is the seam allowance. And five eighths of an inch is the universal seam allowance. So they're not going to tell you the seam allowance in every single line. If they don't otherwise state three eighths, or one fourth for any particular reason, you're gonna be doing five eighths of an inch. All right, so here's another fun part. Adjust if necessary. So this part is if you are um, trying to shorten or lengthen your outfit, or usually the pattern has a spot where you can do that. So this line tells me that this is, if I wanna lengthen or shorten it, I'm gonna use this spot right here. Um, so with the shortening, it tells you here, you crease along adjustment line make a fold half the amount needed, all right? And so what they mean is that you're going to basically, what I would recommend too with this, you just find find it, fold it a little bit where that, full, um, where that shorten and lengthen line is, and then you're gonna just fold it up where you're trying to, I'm gonna start over. Let me fold it the opposite way this time. And you're just gonna fold it up just a little bit depending on the length that you need, okay? And so this is where, and then you're gonna tape it, and this is where you're going to cut out your, you're gonna cut out your pattern like normal after you do that. So if I want it shorter, I'm just gonna keep going up just a little bit, all right? But that is where you would shorten it. All right, now if you wanna lengthen it now, um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that, wherever that same line is, and you're gonna cut it right at that lengthen and shorten line. I'm gonna cut right here. And then you're gonna extend it to however, whatever the length is. So if you're taller and you want it to be a little longer, then you can do that. And I have my tape here. And you can notice even in the, um, in the picture, it shows you what I would also recommend. You can put um, a little piece of paper under it. Um, and I don't actually have a piece of paper with me. I did not think that part through, but you can put a pe piece of paper under it to make sure that it um, it's um, not touching your other pieces of whatever. And you can probably see some makeup on there. I apologize. And then you are going to just tape it. You separate and tape. And this gives you the longer length. Um, this is definitely easier with smaller pieces. Use with nap. Now this part is actually important. So give me two seconds. I'm going to show you what a nap would be. All right, so if this is my fabric and you can follow on my second screen, let's say my print has arrows pointing upwards. All right, this is my fabric or my print on my fabric. And I am cutting my outfit out. All right, if I, or like if it's going upwards um, or sideways or whatever, or like let's we can do a line here. I mean, it doesn't matter, but it it's basically has a direction that it's going in. So this is my unique little fabric. All right, when they say with a nap, that means that if you cut out a piece like this, like this, 
all right the arrows are all going to be pointing upwards if you decide to cut the other piece out like this now the arrows are going to be po um, pointing downward so you got to pay attention to the nap when you are um doing this and and honestly this is this is one example of a nap but there could be a different ones where um it could change up a little but this is the i guess the most common example of a nap you want to make sure that it's all pointing in the same direction and of course this is on the fold um in order to make sure that when you open it out or you when you cut it you know it's one's not facing downwards and one's going up i've definitely done that before and it, it i mean it, you can get creative with it because you can have you can have arrows pointing up with one and arrows pointing down in the other and that works perfectly fine just make sure you pay attention if that's not what you want meant to do um so that is that <laughs> and if you look at the bottom you're going to notice some parts that says dress A, dress B, and dress C. So this is just the views and how to lay out the fabric or how to lay out the pattern pieces on the fabric. Um, and so if you notice, and there's a part right, if you look right above that section, you're going to notice little things like right side of pattern, wrong side of pattern, right side of pattern uh, fabric, and then wrong side of the fabric. This just tells you when you lay it out on here, that's what that's gonna look like so I like if you are a new if you are a new sewer for sure follow this way all right because you don't want to cut out the wrong pieces um, or you don't want to cut them out in the wrong direction um, and so right side of the pattern looks white and so if you're doing dress a this means that this is the right the top side of the pattern the right side of the pattern and I have I'll have to open this out so you can see it actually when you're talking about the right side of the pattern, we're talking about the pattern part, pattern piece that has the markings on it. So I forgot I had these little cute little things. So use this. So um, basically the top, when they say the wrong side of the pattern, they're just talking about the back here. Um, when they're talking about the right side of the fabric, they're just talking about the part that, you know, the pretty side, the side that you want to show. The wrong side of the fabric is the side that you don't really care to show. So last but not least, I have the glossary so what I'm gonna do because the glossary is just a bunch of words and definitions that this, if you're a new sewer you're probably not gonna be familiar with the words I'm just gonna do a sew along on how to actually put this outfit together where I'm gonna apply the words in the glossary to the sewing techniques that I'm gonna be showing you in the sew along so if you stick around for part three in my next video you'll be able to follow along with every step on how to apply those words so that is all I have for you today if you have any questions let me know if there's anything that you need me to clarify let me know in the comments but that is all i have for you so i hope you have a wonderful day and see you later